a man looks out into the stars. They look different out here. The constellations haven't quite filled in yet. There are stars where there shouldn't be. He didn't notice these things at first, as he was busy trying to figure out how he got here and how to get home. But he doesn't bother with that much anymore. Instead, he just looks out to the stars. Though he won't admit it, he does so because he knows what is coming. As a scientist, he can't help but find all of this fascinating, in spite of the incredible danger a paleontologist would kill to see the things he's seen over the last few months. But it doesn't matter. He won't live to tell anyone about any of this. His name is Peter Parker. He's the smartest man on the face of the earth. And tomorrow, he'll be dead. Peter begrudges his fate and is disturbed by a face he sees every night when he dreams. He doesn't know this woman and wonders who she is, but it's sad he's going to die before he finds out. But he might not have to die alone. Peter travels to a place to talk to a man. He doesn't want to go, fearing this other man will kill him, but he knows he must. He enters a place the other man calls the Valley of Fire, and Peter feels comfort in hearing a battle in the distance as they are the first voices he has heard in weeks. Peter approaches Logan, who is defending a tribe from a group of intelligent apes. Spider-Man warns Wolverine that interacting with these creatures could affect the timeline and change the future of the human race. Logan ignores this, instead demanding to know why Spider-Man is here, having warned Peter to stay out of the Valley of Fire, or he would kill the young man. Peter says they are all about to die that they have been flung back into the time of the dinosaurs, and that time is about to come to an end. The asteroid that wiped these creatures out is about to land within a day, and it looks like it's going to hit right around where they are standing. Spider-Man leaves, satisfied he at least warned his old colleague, in spite of Logan's outright hostility. Privately, both men lament being stuck in the past with each other. Each would have preferred pretty much any other superhero. Spider-Man feels if he was with someone like Tony Stark, they would have figured this out already. While Logan amuses that even the Hulk at his worst would have been better than Peter Parker. Worst of all, neither of them know what exactly happened to them. Approximately 66 million years in the future, Spider-Man swings through the city, enjoying a new morning in New York City. While nearby, in a dark alleyway, Logan corners a mass murderer. The killer said he was paid to do all of it, just to lure Logan here, and puts a gun to his own head. Next door, inside a bank, a villain called the Orb is committing a robbery. Spider-Man and Logan both intervene, right as the robbers uncover some strange glowing diamonds from a safety deposit box. When the heroes attack, the diamonds fall to the floor, and explode in a burst of energy. And that's all the two know about what happened to them. Logan was able to instantly determine that they weren't teleported to the Savage Land, but rather the Far Pass, and from there, the two went their separate ways, unable to find a way home or even an explanation as to what exactly happened to them. Peter lived on his own, doing research, building a home, obsessing over mysterious visions of the woman, and raising spiders as pets. Logan ignored Peter's concerns about affecting early human history and joined a local tribe, defending them, learning their language, and attempting to teach them how to brew beer. In their present, Peter decides to release his spiders and burn his home down, again not wanting to affect the course of human history by leaving some evidence behind by accident. At which point he gives up, willing to surrender to his fate at the hands of the falling asteroid. But he eventually decides to start trying to solve his dilemma, even as it begins its final descent towards Earth. Meanwhile, Logan frees the ape creatures that attacked his tribe, knowing they don't have much time left and telling them to go be with their families. He thinks to himself how he regrets treating Peter Parker all these months here, when suddenly, Logan spots a figure spying on him, who he is able to pin to the ground. The strange figure begs for mercy, but just as he is about to say who he works for, the meteor strikes. Unbeknownst to them, it is coated in the same diamonds the two heroes encountered at a bank that sent them back in time. Peter Parker wakes up with Logan standing over him. They are both surprised to still be alive, but Logan confesses that Peter might have been right about it not being a good idea to mess with the timeline. 